What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of DJ Reacts. We've got a great episode for you. Uh, it's going to be a little bit off from what I normally do, but it seems like uh, it's fitting for the time. So, uh, as a disclaimer, like always, uh, this is for entertainment purposes only. Don't believe anything that you see on these videos. Don't believe anything that I say. Do your own research. I always... I'm a big proponent of doing your own research so we can all collab together because one person can't know everything and we all make mistakes and overlook things. So do your research. But uh, we're going to get into some stuff about uh, 2024. You know, uh, it's already a bit crazy. So let's go ahead and see what we can see. It's going to be weird. There's some weird movies coming out. How many guys saw, saw the recent movie, Leave the World Behind? Anybody saw that movie there? Oh, okay. Yeah, you know all these... What are you, am I watching a movie or is this a documentary realistic thing? And then I'm seeing Mark Zuckerberg just spent $100 million building a house in Hawaii with a nuclear bunker. What does he know that the rest of the world doesn't know about? Talk about the timing. Oh, accidentally, coincidentally, a week after that movie comes out, a new movie comes out. What's the name of that movie? Civil War. Civil? Huh. Leave the world behind. Our power grid in America hasn't been updated. 75% of it hasn't been updated in God, 50 years. And you're kind of talking about that. Then you're pinning whites against blacks. There's a line in the movie that says, Dad, you know if something goes down, we can't trust these white people. I know that's something both you and mom agree on. Why do you put that line in the movie, Barack? And you were helping with the script. Why would you put that in the movie? Why would you put that in the movie? Barack, weren't you the same guy that gave a talk at the DNC in 2004 about bringing people together? What happened to that guy? So if there's anything, uh, if, you, if you don't know who that is, that's Patrick Bet David. Uh, he's got an amazing YouTube channel. I would suggest go watch it. He interviews a lot of people and has basically become a multimillionaire off of uh, YouTube, which is amazing. It's great. But... He's right, you know, uh, I've talked about this in a lot of my videos, you know, whenever you see an us versus them mentality, whenever they're trying to divide us, whenever they're trying to make us seem like we're so different and we're not, you know, so whenever that mentality is brought up, there's an agenda there and that mentality is brought up all the time. Because they want to split us up. They want to make us seem like we're so different. Putting black, I mean, Barack Obama putting blacks against whites is kind of the, it would be like me, you know, I'm black and white and a few other things, you know, uh, it, it would be, it's asinine, but it's something to pay attention to. Uh, I would trust what he says more than you know you guys already know i don't trust news channels i don't watch them at all not on tv you know i i go to the internet for my information but uh yeah it's, it's definitely gonna be an interesting year and it it kind of makes me a bit paranoid with the things they're coming out with like what he's talking about so i think this is the year to start preparing for some stuff but on that note, uh, and I did a short about this too, but on that note, you know, we're going to look into some other things dealing with 2024. Uh, I haven't seen all of these videos, but we're going to see what we can see and what they're talking about, and then we can talk about them. Scientists at the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, as it's better known, have discovered a way to open up an interdimensional portal. We just had collisions at an unprecedented energy, 13.6 tera electron volt, and this opens a new era of exploration at CERN. This time, the discovery has been made by a team of physicists and technologists working on the Large Hadron Collider, the world's most powerful particle accelerator. In today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the secretive intergovernmental organization one of the biggest scientific experiments ever conducted, bringing together over 10,000 scientists from 85 different countries. The LHC measures over 27 kilometers in circumference 
and stretches beneath the Swiss-French border. Weighing over 7,000 tons, the LHC is so powerful that scientists were able to create the conditions that occurred one billionth of a second after the universe began. Other scientists believe that CERN may have accidentally opened a portal to an alternate universe, allowing beings or substances from another dimension to pass through into ours. Demons are one explanation, with some saying that CERN opened a portal to hell with the Large Hadron Collider. Many have drawn similarities with the Book of Revelations 9-2, which speaks of a bottomless pit that angels who have sinned are cast into. Theorists believe that the mysterious energy released during the experiment is from this bottomless pit. Many have begun to associate the Large Hadron Collider's 7.2 kilometer circular structure with the ring of the pit. This ties closely with theories from within CERN attempting to open portals for demons to enter our world via the collider. We know that CERN's experiment disrupted the Earth's magnetic field and found more new particles that can be used to transfer matter and potentially open up new interdimensional portals. CERN is a highly secretive international agency that has repeatedly made waves in the news for its mind-boggling experiments and discoveries. It's an intergovernmental organization funded by 23 member states with the goal of researching particle physics and advancing scientific knowledge. In its simplest form, CERN's main purpose is to explore the fundamentals of the universe in order to gain a deeper understanding of how it works and to unlock new capabilities like time travel. Since its inception in 1954, CERN has been pushing the boundaries of science and technology by constructing sophisticated equipment to test their theories, including the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, a 17-mile-long particle accelerator. Oof. Now, on the surface, CERN looks like a prestigious government agency that seeks to better the world. But what if it had a secret agenda that had been hidden from the public's view? For years, CERN has been a name synonymous with the occult. Combined with their hailing of Lord Shiva, many people think that they're attempting to open a portal into another dimension by tapping into dark forces. Lord Shiva is known to represent the destroyer of worlds, and the organization loves him so much that they have a life-size statue of him at their headquarters in Geneva, Switzerland. But let's take a step back and look at the science behind the Large Hadron Collider. The LHC is essentially a particle accelerator that accelerates protons to near light speed. These protons then collide with each other, creating subatomic particles, allowing them to study their properties. These collisions create an immense amount of energy, approximately 600 million times hotter than the center of the sun. It's also worth noting that the LHC is not only a particle accelerator, it's also a time machine. So, yeah, CERN, I have a lot of different thoughts about CERN. I've had three very close friends of mine that are physicists that work there, and they've told me a lot of things that the public doesn't know, but also they told me things that I pretty much already had an idea of. And these weren't things, uh, I haven't heard anything about portals. I've seen a lot of rumor about portals, but I haven't heard anything from my friends that work there about portals. Maybe they're not privy to that kind of information. I don't know. But uh, it wouldn't shock me if CERN did do something to where they were able to open up a portal. I've already said many times that I think CERN did something back in 2012 to where they put us on a different branch of our timeline to where we're just, you know, one, not literally one, but a frequency away from where we were supposed to be. And that's where we are now. Excuse me. But with the whole, you know, uh, new earth shifting and our frequencies shifting, the world's frequency shifting, I think they kind of meld it together that's a thought that's a theory of mine but i know cern had a lot to do with that in 2012 and i know that uh 
there were supposed to be certain things that happened in 2012 and when those things don't happen a new branch of a timeline you know a new branch branches off and that's where we are now but it's all still happening now so it doesn't shock me that people are saying that one thing i can say that i know for a fact portals are always bad portals are always bad i'm not talking religion i'm not talking anything like that um, no I, I don't give a shit about hell i'm saying anything that has to use a portal is bad anything that ever comes through a portal is bad portals in and of themselves are bad because Things that don't need to use portals are only good. Anything that has to use a portal has to have a portal created. The amount of energy that goes into creating a portal, it's bad. Don't ask me how I know. I'm just saying it's bad. Take it for what it is or just think I'm full of shit. Either way, doesn't matter to me, but portals are bad see people talking about portals which is not a common topic but yeah they're bad anything coming through a portal is bad i mean i i could give i, I could do a whole video on uh people that have opened portals and brought bad things into our reality but portals are bad just like drugs. Bad, okay? It's Babe? Like, yeah? Is your sister still gay, or is she bi, or is she straight, or what? Babe, what are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I've seen her with girls, and I've seen her with guys, so I don't know. She just broke up with her girlfriend. That should give you your answer. Yeah, she's still kind of sad about that, huh? Well, yeah, she's devastated. Why? Well, because the FDA just approved new medication for lesbians with depression. Don't. Just don't. It's called Tricox again. I hadn't seen I, I thought this. <laughs> oh, I hope I don't get flagged for that. I haven't seen these videos, so like I said, I, I, I thought it was something about CERN at first, but still, that's good. That's good stuff. Love it. Love it. Whoops, I'm not on. This is going to be another funny video, I guarantee, because I didn't watch all of this. I just saw it and picked it, and I, I thought it was, I thought it would be good. So let, let's see where this goes. I'm, I was, I had a, I had a direction for this video, which was portals, 2024, things like that. But, you know, some humor in the video, we could always use that. So let's see where this takes us. A Chinese baby was born too early, so his parents named him Satin Lee. Why don't Chinese kids believe in Santa Claus? Because they make the toys. A Japanese girl married a Canadian guy. They named their child Me So Sorry. I used to think I had a Japanese friend, but it was just my imagination. How did the Asian travel back in time? He used a time machine. A Chinese baby was born before his due date, so his parents named him Early. We Asians hate arguing with Italians because they are white and we always wong. What has two wings and a halo? An Asian phone call. Wing wing, hello. A Chinese mother and Italian father had a baby. They named him Lavioli. Who won the Asian cooking contest? It was a tie. Why can't two Asians make a white kid? Because the two wong don't make a white <laughs> I can laugh at this because I grew up extremely Asian. I have Thai godmother, Thai aunts. I grew up very Asian. I don't think this is any bit racist. I think it's just everything. Every race has humor in it. And I grew up extremely Asian in Europe, which is funny. But yeah, I, I used to eat kimchi and noodles every day when I came home from school and when I was in a. Uh, uh, Elementary, getting what's called here, but yeah, <laughs> he just exaggerates it to 
like fresh off the boat accent when that's not his real accent but it's good i love it good stuff this video i did watch some of and i keep up with this guy because he's got a lot of uh sense and he's talking about a lot of commonalities that spread throughout thousands of years in different topics so Let's see what he's talking about here, but it's it's usually pretty good, but like I say, always take everything with a grain of rice and do your own research. But let's see. Cruising oil. This is the Freemasons. This is uh Hindu. This is your spine, and that's Egyptian. That's right. Because guess what? It's called Santa Claus when he comes down the chimney and gives a gift to us. This is the Santa Claustrum. It's in your brain and it comes down and it gives a gift to us and it goes back up. So this is why Jesus dies at 33 years old because it goes down your spine and back up. The Christos or the golden oil. In Greek, Christos means gold. So the Claustrum is up here. Santa goes down the chimney. That's because Jesus was in Nazareth with his mama. And then King Herod wants to kill Jesus. So Jesus must go all the way down to be born in Bethlehem. Then he goes back up. See, he's going down this river and back up, down the spine and back up. So this is Kemet in Egypt. This is the Jordan River. So the Jordan River is a little tiny replica of this because this was the lotus flower or your spine. So this represents your spine. If we know that this did represent your spine, which it did, then undoubtedly the Jordan River represented the spine just like the Nile River. This is for you ignorant churchgoers, I swear. Candy cane is red for uh, feminine, white for masculine. It's the, mes it's, the, it's the two nerves, the Ida and the Pingala, the sun and the moon. So the pingala is the pineal gland, that's the ida. That's the pituitary, the negative component, and the pineal gland, the positive component. So you have the milk and, or the milk and honey, the gold and silver, this is the promised land. So when, uh, what's his name? Jack climbs the beanstalk, he goes up his spine and finds the golden egg in the gray clouds, which is the gray matter in your brain. Well, look, St. Nicholas is St. naga -less. Naga means serpent. That's why when Thor takes the Bifrost Bridge, this is your thorax, which is 12 vertebrae. There's 12 vertebrae of your thorax, thoracic vertebrae, and there's 12 ribs on each side, 24 ribs. So there's Arthur and the 12 knights at the round table, your 12 vertebrae. Jesus and his 12 disciples. Thor takes the Rainbow Bridge, which is your chakras, your spine. Arthur is the only one who can lift the sword. Thor is the only one who can lift the hammer. Because you have to be worthy. Raise your frequency to go up. Pituitary gland, pineal gland, and your optic thalamus. So the energy goes down from your claustrum, the oil at least. The oil goes down the vagus nerve to the sacrum bone where it pumps it back up. And it actually activates your third eye and it illuminates the crown chakra. This is the pingala and the ida and they mix and they come back up and your skull is the holy grail and that's why it's the elixir of life the fountain of youth because your skull is called a fontanelle that little hole at the top of all of babies heads it's called it's literally called a fontanelle at the top of the head because it's the fountain so the energy goes from the bottom to the top and the, the snake grows its wings yeah he said a lot of good stuff there uh but it's St. Nikolaus, not St. Nicholas. It's German. It's Nikolaus. It's a completely different tradition. Uh, it's where you guys get Santa Claus from. You guys get it from Coca-Cola. But in our tradition, for you know over a thousand years, it's been St. Nikolaus. But yeah, I think he's bringing a lot of uh, a lot of commonalities together. And you know, I don't know. I, would, I wouldn't say, well, I don't know enough to say, I'll be honest, I don't know enough to say that these aren't all connected or that they don't all connect in the meaning the way he's presenting them, but you can do that with a lot of different things, you know, you can, you can find... The human body is amazing, and then when you talk about the human body... Uh, life experience and then our solar system those things have so many different uh different uh similarities 
I mean, the intricacies are very small between them. They're they're very similar. So you can take a lot of that and make it seem very similar. So I really don't know. You know, I he might be onto something. He might not be onto something. You know, I think it's definitely worth looking at. I don't think any information is beyond looking at. But, you know, you could, you could give the same kind of scenario to probably 50 other things that go on in life or in any field. You know, so, yeah, the human body is amazing. Nature is amazing. Our solar system is amazing. You know, the fact that we exist the way we do you know the if you understand like the complexities of what it takes to make your finger do this just just this top part from your knuckle to the tip of your nail to do this it's it's really amazing the fact that that exists is amazing in and of itself so i don't have a problem with what he's saying i'm not gonna sit there and go you know worship it but you know it's good information nothing bad it doesn't uh bother me good information breaking news this video behind me is going viral and causing controversy check this out being single and 46 sucks i laugh it off but i'm 46 years old and while I'm getting ready for surgery and everything, it dawned on me that I'm 46 years old and I don't have a husband to take care of me. I don't have a husband to help me get ready. I'm 46 years old and I still what is she grabbing at? I cannot stand when people do this when they talk. It makes me want to snap their fucking necks or just punch them in the throat. I cannot stand and nor will I deal with another human being that does this. And if that's how you talk, that I'm, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying, the average guy, if you're talking to them and trying to make a point and you're catching imaginary shit in the air yeah it might be while you're single I still need my mama it sucks that's it it just sucks and I'm f tired now there's pretty much two groups of people responding to this video one group of people feeling sympathy for this woman and another group of people showing her no love whatsoever. The group of people that are showing her pretty much no love whatsoever are pretty much saying she made this bed. That she's just a product of modern dating where everyone thinks they can do better, get better, so they never quote unquote settle and keep on trying to get the next best thing until they wake up and they're 46 and single. Because we live in a time where people don't want to work through anything. If stuff gets hard, they just break up and think that they can just get on their phone and find the next best thing. They think that they can just swipe and find someone better and think the grass is greener on the other side. And this mindset is vastly different from what was, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. That if people got into a relationship, it was about getting married, not just, you know, lustful desires. Now the group that was feeling sympathy for this woman is pretty much saying that we don't know what she had been through. That maybe she tried her best in her relationships and that just for some odd reason they just didn't work out. That some people just have a series of unfortunate events that are out of their control that can you know make them be single at 46. Because she could have been dating someone and that person either passed away or you know they cheated and left her and that sometimes being single is out of our control. And the other people showing her sympathy are pretty much telling her, saying that, you know, you don't need no man, that you can be a strong, independent woman. So I just wanna ask you guys, what side are you on? Let me know down below. Don't forget to like this video, share it everywhere, hit that follow button. Until next time, love, peace, and taco grease.
All I know is that I hope her surgery went well and I hope she found someone or finds someone that makes her happy. So I will ask you, my astute followers and audience, what do you think? Honestly, what do you think? That seems like a either Virginia or Jersey accent to me. Uh, I don't know why she's single, but I know the whole talking like this is a no-no. People don't like that. Even other women don't like it, let alone men. Uh, if you're 46 and you're single, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I love being single, but what men don't want, what most men don't want, is somebody who decided to just you know, start sleeping with, you know, countless men having three, four, five different baby daddies in their 20s. And then when they turn 40, they're like, oh, I don't have anybody. And then go looking for, you know, a, a good man. Excuse me, because a high value man is not going to want that, you know? Not at all. I have no biological children, never been married, I am engaged, but, you know, I'm not too far from her age, and but that's, that's me, you know, I chose to do my career, travel the world, learn, do a lot of things until I wanted to settle down. But, you know, a lot of my friends have anywhere from two to six kids and two to six different mothers for their children. And it's something that, you know, I think is, I think that's a younger generation thing. You know, I was brought up differently. And as a European, you don't see Europeans going out there just, you know, uh, at 18 and 19, just having babies, doing all this stuff. Uh, we're not brought up that way. Most of us. I'm not saying that's a, like, a definite for everyone, but the majority of us, we're not brought up that way. So, yeah. I mean, I think it's something you need to... You need some introspective on. You know, look inside of yourself and see why that is. Because so many people have this big ego. You gotta let go of that ego. So many people have this major ego and they can't let it go. They have to be the one that's either in control or always right. And that ego is what's gonna keep you single until you're 46. You know, I make mistakes all of the time. When I do, I'm very quick to adjust. You no, know? I'm very sorry. That was my bad. I was being an ass. I apologize. I will make it up to you and never do that again. That's all life is, you know. Make mistakes, you learn from it, you move on. It's not that difficult, but it seems like a lot of the younger generation, like these millennials and the ones after them, it seems like. They don't have that in them. They're not built like that. You know, we were built, you know, if you're an 80s baby or a 90s child like I was, you know, we were built to go through a lot of shit and we made a lot of mistakes, but we learned from it, you know, and we also had, you know, I think it's different for males and females. Like as a guy, you know, I would... I still get called an asshole all of the time, but it's 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 a very light asshole. You know, like I can't go around being just a major asshole to everybody. Cause somebody's gonna knock me the fuck out. And I'm a Muay Thai champion fighter, so I can fight. But I grew up with guys that hey, if you're doing something stupid you know, you're going to get popped in the face. Somebody's going to hit you. Somebody's going to knock you out. That's just that. And it's not bullying. 
It's guys checking guys. Hey, don't be such a dick. You don't gotta be such an asshole. Straighten the fuck up. You know, and nobody takes it to heart. But women don't have that. Women don't have that with each other. Nobody's checking them. So they get to do whatever they want. And for the most part, no one checks them. And then you've got these, you know, these two younger generations that are under me that just think they can do whatever they want and life will just fall in its place. And, you know, that's not how life works. I mean, not for everybody. You know, it might work like that for some people, but it doesn't work like that for everybody. So, you know, I'm not, I don't know this person. I'm just saying that there's a big difference between men and women. And men, you know, we have bullying, and I think bullying to an extent is great. You know, you need someone to check you. When you're being a dick, you need a bigger dick to check you. Be like, hey, don't be such a fucking asshole. You know, straighten the fuck up. No harm done. Nobody's hurt. Okay. My bad. But a lot of women don't have that. And I think they need it. You know, because you will definitely not make some of the mistakes that you've made. I mean, you know the term, learn from a fool's mistake. I was taught that since I was a child. And I lived by that. You know, I would interview people. I would study people learn from all of their mistakes so hope her surgery went well but yeah it's kind of strange that you're 46 and you're just now thinking i have no one to what did she say i have no one not support me she said to look after me that's what she's wanting 2024 is going to be absolutely wild. And this is my 2024 prediction. And I'm taking some of this from Ripple's prediction on December 18th. One thing that most people are not paying attention to, they're focused on regulation in America, but they don't understand that in APAC, Asian Pacific, cryptocurrency is being adopted. Blockchain technology is being adopted. They're becoming crypto friendly. They're working and cooperating around regulation. As our country, America, Elizabeth Warren, Jamie Dimon, tells you it's money laundering. And they're literally dragging their heels, pulling America outside of the race for innovation into the future. Now, I'm proud to be an American, but I'll tell you what, our leadership is really fucking up America. Just straight up. It says in God we trust. No, nah, this is in man we trust. These leaders don't trust in God. I trust in God. That's my president and CEO. And Jesus is my running mate. Or I'm his running mate. Let me flip that. So anyways, so basically APAC is Asia Pacific. You got China, you got India, you got all the Asian countries. And guys, they are innovating into blockchain technology. Ripple and XRP is partnering. In Dubai, XRP is an accepted payment. So let me show you a quick, short video, about a minute, with Ray Dalio, one of my favorite, my favorite macroeconomics. And he just left Bridgewater Associates, a billion dollar asset manager. He's gonna share with you how people are innovating into India, because China and America, which are both financially destroyed, are two big bullies fighting against each other, and India is quietly kicking ass. Check this out. If you were to look at China and India, and those two countries specifically, um, and you were to handicap them, as you are uniquely qualified to do, maybe you could just broadly handicap India versus China for us, because this is a topic we've been talking about, Jamal and I, and, and the other besties on the show a whole bunch, and it's now the largest population in the world, I guess people don't realize that, that they've, uh, and they're continuing to grow and the birth rate is in decline in China. So maybe a little bit on India and how you look yeah, at it. Yeah, and I should emphasize that every, every conclusion that I have is a function of, of measuring statistics and having them as leading indicators. Okay, so that's really important, guys. He doesn't follow bullshit politics. He goes 500 years back in history and looks at facts, figures, numbers, logic. To predict the future, you have to understand history. And we have 10-year growth rate estimates for uh, China, uh, excuse me, India, and all the countries, top 22 countries. And you can see it online if you want, country by country, and the reasons for it. India has the highest potential growth rate. I think India um, is where China was when I started to go. I started to go in 1984. So if you look at the complexion, the per capita income, 
And I think um, Modi is a Deng Xiaoping. So that you have a, um, a, ma a massive uh, reform, development, creativity, all those elements. There are, of course, issues, risk issues. Uh, but India is, is very, uh, very important. And I don't think that any of these issues is going to stop India. I also, in history, the countries that were the neutral countries did the best. So in other words, better than the winners in wars. So as we have this conflict between the United States and China and its allies, Russia and so on, as we see that line up, countries that are in the middle, like India, are going to be net beneficiaries of that. Middle East, yeah. Middle East is okay, so India is crushing it in innovation, guys. India is crushing it. So check this out. Companies like Ripple and XRP are diving in and getting locked in out there. So we know that Ripple secured MPI license from MAS looks to expand crypto in APAC. That's Asia Pacific. Do you guys realize that the population is the largest population now? Stop playing politics. Start playing logic. God is my president and CEO, and I'm looking for high frequency because money is just currency. So I hope this information helps. I love you guys very, very much. Appreciate you. As we always say, warriors, rise, get your sh Yeah, I have a lot of Indian friends, and I work with a lot of Indians, and I've been to India a few times. But they're in a population crisis. I never, I never thought that, I never thought that their, their population crisis is not a good thing. You know, you're talking about what over a billion people in a small area, and it's never been a good thing. They have a class system. I'm very familiar with India, extremely familiar with their culture. You know, I even speak a bit of Gujarati. So, uh, but yeah, it's never been a good thing. But yeah, tech-wise, they've been uh, they've been coming up with stuff. You know, I, I worked in tech, so. You know, a lot of countries will outsource to India and, you know, out of, say, you'll have a pool of 20 engineers, right, that you can pull from for any project. Out of those 20 engineers, me always being the lead and the architect and the senior engineer, you know, uh, I'm given what they hand me. And then if I have a problem, I'm like, no, he's not making the cut, you know, because they'll call anyone an engineer. But also, in India, you can go get a master's degree for $30,000. That's why there's so many Indian doctors that come to the U.S. That's why there's so many. And also, when they come here, they get these uh, benefits that we as Americans do not get. And I've heard a lot of people that I know complain about that. So if you're Indian and you come here... You know, you get uh, a bunch of money to open up a business. So this is where you see them uh, starting up, you know, in the beginning it was gas stations, then it was subways, and now it was vape shops. And I'm a, I'm a former vape shop owner myself. You know, I taught some of them the business uh, a few years ago, back before that big hit that we uh, couldn't get over uh, happened. But yeah, so yeah, they get those benefits. This is beneficial for them, but we can't get those benefits. And I don't know if the population crisis is a good thing because I have a lot of friends that are Indian, you know, that I've known for 10, 15 years, like good friends, you know, all over the world, but Indian too. And they are here and they're trying to make it here and it's not good there they have to come here you know because you take uh you, you take your average engineer right out of those pools in india you know you're paying an american six figures a year to be that engineer and he's got to be good but india you're paying them 30000 a year. I know these salaries because I've hired these people. And, but over there, that's good for them. 
you know they're they're not rich or anything but that's a steady nice income they can do a lot with it but i've heard both sides but one thing i hear the most personally from from people that i know is that the population crisis is not a good thing because there's so many people that can't afford the health care there you know they can't afford it they can't do anything about it but india is one of those places that has all of these natural uh, medicines but also they have a lot of scammers like they they not only scam the u.s they scam each other you know indians are not going to do anything that they they're not proficient in so like me i'll go out back and build a new deck you know i'll go buy the wood planer i'll you know i'll do everything you know saw everything and and i've done that i've actually got a concrete saw that i got a big a trench in for my uh my slab that i put out there for my deck but indians don't do that they will hire the person that's qualify to do it because they just will not touch it but when it comes to little things like phones and you know uh virtual assistants and scamming and things like that they're all about that you know especially if they're not educated but their education costs so little over there you know it's not free like in parts of europe it costs so little that you know you can get an mba for thirty thousand. you can become a doctor for sixty thousand. come over here but then you come over here and your big thing is slinging pills you know i have indian doctors that are close friends of mine that i go to dinner with you know a few times you know throughout the year and we talk all the time and that's the big thing they're like americans love their drugs that's my bread and butter you know one of them's my GP, and I'm like, I just, I just need you in case I need to get some lab work done or get a flu shot. I don't really need anything from you because I don't, you know, I do natural stuff. And he's like, well, you're the only person, you know, my bread and butter is these Americans that love their pills. So I don't know how I feel about what he's saying. You know, maybe things are turning and I'm not just, um, I'm just not in the loop about it. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I've heard both things. You know, it's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing. They've got a class system. So, you know, if you're talking about tech and the good stuff, that's a small percentage of their class system because there's a massive percentage that's under those classes. You know, because, like I said, India runs as a class system. Welcome to 2024. Here is what you should have on your radar for U.S. news and politics this year and some of my predictions of what I think will come out of these things. First, it is a presidential election year. We are probably going to have another Trump versus Biden rematch. I'm not going to predict who I think will win this, but I will predict that you will see Joe Biden hanging out with Olivia Rodrigo and Renee Rapp, especially at the end of the summer and in the fall. There are 34 Senate elections this year. Again, not going to predict what I think is going to happen with this, but I will say you are probably going to see a lot of Republicans either lying about or avoiding questions on abortion. Trump is going to be in court a lot, like a lot, a lot. Some of this will be televised and he will probably brag about the ratings. Speaking of trials, Republicans are going to try and impeach Joe Biden with zero evidence and only the cold hard proof that he helped his son through addiction. Just going to predict that this will happen around the same time that they're flirting with another cutesy little government shutdown and we'll I'm just going to stop her right there. All of these, these are not predictions. These are things that are obviously happening. This is not a prediction, so I apologize for putting this in my video. Uh, I probably won't take it out because I want you to see what people think predictions are. Like, they're, they're predicting things that are already stated to happen. These are not, these are not predictions. But let's see what else we can see. Did you know that The Simpsons recently predicted two major events that have already happened in 2024? First, they foresaw the tsunami in Japan, and then there was the alien attack at the Miami Mall. The third prediction is quite frightening, so watch until the end to keep your family safe. In Season 17, Episode 18, titled The Wettest Story Ever Told, The Simpsons are on a boat near Japan. Suddenly, a huge wave hits them, but it's not just any wave, 
It's a tsunami. This massive wave heads towards the city and destroys it. They also foresaw the alien attack at the Miami Mall. In a more recent episode, Bart and Lisa are on vacation in Florida, hanging out at the mall when they discover a strange alien in the storage rooms. Little did they know that, a few minutes later, there would be a full-on alien invasion. But the worst is yet to come with the most terrifying prediction. There's a third prediction for 2024 that is really surprising. All the details will be in part two, and we'll explore their scariest prediction yet. So make sure to like, comment, and share. If you've been feeling the shift in the world, here's why. If you thought the last three years was crazy, just wait until 2024, because the next 20 years is about to be batshit insane. We are about to enter the last period in a 180-year cycle called Period 9, according to Chinese astrology. The last 20 years was ruled by the Earth element, which is why agriculture, real estate, higher education, especially institutional education, and young men were main focus, like Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, and Jeff Bezos. The next 20 years, we're shifting to the fire element, so this is all about technology, creativity, artificial intelligence, women. But what does this mean for you? Two different types of non-physical worlds are going to grow astronomically. The first is cloud-based technology, artificial intelligence, electricity, internet, 5G, anything remote, AR, VR, metaverse, ET, satellites, you name it. Yes, I do think we're gonna come into alien slash ET contact. The second area of non-physical world that's gonna come into major focus is the spiritual world, the psychic world, the shamanic journey. There will be major conversations and developments around remote viewing, remote travel, spiritual intelligence, heart-based intelligence. There might even be a cure for Alzheimer's or schizophrenia, anything that is the disease of the mind or the brain. And I truly believe that the people who don't keep up with the developments of these two intangible worlds are going to feel lackluster, left behind, emotionless, kind of numb. So the real question is, as the world becomes more separate and remote, how do you stay connected? And that takes a lot of mental, emotional, spiritual intelligence. How do we navigate the ethics of artificial intelligence and all these other technological advancements? In many ways, I think gone are the days of blind vulnerability, trust, authenticity. And I think we're shifting to the era of ownership, radical candor, alignment, and truth, like truth over trust which is another reason why database technology is going to become huge. The good news is there are proven, ancient, systematic roadmap and spiritual frameworks you can use to navigate this time of change. There are no shortcuts. There are no quick wins. This is all about digging deep. These are the same tools and frameworks that people have been using for hundreds of years to navigate these changes anytime there was a major period change, which means now is the time to not only learn these tools, but really deeply examine yourself so that you're prepared to win big in the next 20 year cycle. That is why I'm going live on December 10th, 11th, and 12th to share my secret sauce as well as my proprietary method that I've developed to navigate relationships and personal changes powerfully in times like this. Maybe I heard that, that wrong. Did she say my apartheid method? That's what I heard, but maybe I was wrong. That's a strange phrase to use. So, uh, cloud-based. Yeah, cloud-based is growing but what a lot of people don't understand is uh during covid amazon pretty much created a monopoly cloud right so you've got you know all these other cloud-based systems what amazon did was during covid you know, and i worked full storm covid you know, i had a team building a 3.6 million uh square foot infrastructure one of the most complex networks in the country. And uh, what Amazon did was they used that time to monopolize uh, a lot of things. And so when I had to link uh, a certain auto manufacturer up with their Latin American counterparts, you're limited to what you can use in Latin America. But guess who's there? Amazon. Amazon has very big, uh, very big presence there. Well, I needed an aggregate. I need it two ways because I need to be able to fail over. One failed, I need to fail over. So there was another uh, player, Latin America, not quite as big as Amazon, not nearly as big as Amazon. But the things that Amazon has done is just insanely impressive and uh yeah and so when i ask them when i'm talking to them about latency you know this is just a common question you know hey uh i need to know what is the latency from here to here give me a guesstimate because i can calculate it you know but i just need to know if i'm doing this through you and you're hosting it 
what is the latency? And they told me I had to sign an NDO. This is a very common topic, by the way for engineers. This is not something that you'd have to sign an NDO for. This is not even something that would be off topic. You know, it's it's like everybody talks about it. You have to know this. These are things you have to know. And uh kind of like, you know, uh hey uh if I have high blood pressure, when is the bad point? When will I have a heart attack? That's a very common thing. You know, most people with high blood pressure know that. Or if you're diabetic, you know when your glucose is too high. You know that range of what's high. Amazon uh, has done a lot, so I don't see. Uh, I don't see what people don't understand is cloud-based is just another person's server. So I mean, you can like layman's are like, oh, it's in the cloud. No, it's in someone else's data center. It's being hosted by someone else. And uh, Amazon has just done so much. And, I, and I'm not talking about, like, you know, what Elon Musk is talking about, like, in, you know, in space. I'm talking about Amazon has laid, you know, very thick fiber going on the floor, on the ocean floor from U.S. to Latin America to connect everything. You know, they've done a lot of stuff. Through COVID, it's like you come out of COVID, and it's like when the f did all this shit happen? During COVID, they were building, and uh, and yeah, and then uh, the other topic. Uh, oh, and the other thing she talked about: uh, artificial intelligence, remote viewing. I don't think that's going to be that big. Uh, I've done the gateway experiment quite a few times. And I can revote, uh, revote, even talk. I can remote view, but not well. So when you're remote viewing, you're looking through someone else's eyes, right? Well, the thing that you cannot do is focus. It takes a lot of practice, and I've only been able to slightly focus. So say you're sitting on a park bench and there's a playground with a chain link fence around it. I remote through your eyes. What I'm going to see is a bunch of these X's that make up the chain link fence if you are just happen to be looking at that fence. So I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. So I'm not that good at it yet, but I have been able to do it successfully many times. I just have not gotten very good at focusing, you know, because like I said, you're looking through someone else's eyes. They might be looking at something like right now I can see all kinds of stuff, but if somebody were to re remote view through my eyes right now, my mind and my eyes, they would see all of this, but only what I'm actually looking at would be clear. But they would see everything, and it's kind of overwhelming. That's the best way I can describe it. AI, I think uh, that's a uh, that's been a big catchphrase that people have been using, and I get tired of it because I hear it in my everyday life at work, and people are mistaking machine learning for AI. They're two completely separate topics. But people think because machine learning is machine learning, then it's AI, and it's not. It's not even the same thing. But yeah, I think Amazon has uh, done some really amazing things. But I also think Amazon has done some things that's terrifying because I've specifically had to build, you know, uh, you know, uh, landing zones on their cloud and it's terrifying the amount of power they hold you know they say well we'll charge you this much money for this and that and you know i work for a very large customer so i'm like well we need a little bit more than that but it says here that it's a no-go is that the case or can we negotiate well how much are you wanting to negotiate if you're talking this much higher, 
you know, maybe not, but you know, maybe in a few small steps, yeah, we can negotiate. So it's never a no. And it just, the amount that they've done is impressive. And it's like, I don't like monopolies. I, I like capitalism. I like being able to have multiple options. And like I said, in Latin America, uh, Amazon was and is the big dog, but there was another player that I was able to use as an aggregate. So if something happened in the U.S. from Latin America, I could fail over from Amazon to something else or from something else to Amazon. But I never wanted to use uh, a single point of failure. That was my main thing. So... Yeah, I don't know. I probably just went off on a tangent, but uh, cloud and AI and remote viewing, I mean, those things are constantly growing and changing. I don't know what that has to do with 2024. That's, that's just always going to be a thing that's changing and growing. Ask and you shall receive. I have started building my list of 2024 pop culture predictions. And here is my first round. Number one on my list is Kendall Jenner is going to come out as bi. I think that there are way too many kids in that family for none of them to be gay or bi. And I think Kendall is the most likely candidate, especially if we are going off of the blind saying that she's hooking up with Nina Dobra and Sean White. But back to the list. Number two, Gypsy Rose Blanchard is going to be on Z-Way. I think if anyone were to interview Gypsy Rose Blanchard, it would be Z-Way. So I think that's going to happen. Third, George Santos goes to prison and becomes best friends with Jen Shaw. They both love fraud. They're both kind of funny, but like also terrible. So I think that they would get along. Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey get engaged. I feel like this is a given. It's definitely happening and I can't wait. Next, Kylie and Timothy end up pregnant. It is an accident and Timothy gets scared and breaks up with her. Kylie is a single mom again. Euphoria is finally canceled. After the cancellation, the cast is going to come out and spill all the tea on Sam Levinson. Zendaya is going to move on to bigger and better things. Uh, Boy Genius is going to break up. Lucy Dacus is going to get upset with Phoebe Bridgers because Phoebe is friends with Maddie Healy and Lucy is going to be like, you're problematic and they're going to break up. Suits is going to come back. This is more of a manifestation because I love Suits and Meghan Markle is going to return to acting and be in the reboot. Another Meghan comeback. Megan Fox is going to make another comeback and it's actually going to be successful this time because we are going to support her. Last one, Tesla class action lawsuit. Elon is going to go bankrupt and he's going to have to sell Twitter and a new social media platform is going to be born. If you guys want a part two, leave a comment below and let me know what your pop culture predictions are and if you agree with any of mine. I'm just going to go ahead and say my bad to my viewers. I am so sorry. I have no fucking clue about like 75% of the shit she just talked about. Yeah, Elon Musk, uh, Megan Fox, Megan Markle. But I don't know what they're doing. I know who these people are. I don't know what they're doing. And uh, Kendall Jenner. I, I, like, just, there's, I, I, I should have worn my no fucks given shirt. Or I just gave out my last fuck. So I have no more to give shirt. My bad. I, I shouldn't. Like I said, I haven't seen these, so uh, I'll do better. <laughs> Just gotta do better. This was so stupid. I feel like I burned like two brain cells just listening to her. Last year, my 2023 predictions went viral. So here we go, 2024. Travis Kelsey will propose to Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl in February. Ariana Grande and SpongeBob announce a pregnancy. The BFF's podcast is going to end and it's caused by someone getting in a scandal. Alex Earl, Jake Shane, and Chris Olsen will be the only TikTokers at the Met Gala this year. There will be a scandal involving Jacob Lordy and it will end him and Olivia Jade's relationship. Gypsy Rose will get the 22 hat at the second leg of the US Eras tour. Northwest will release an album. Selena Gomez, and Benny Blanco get eloped and we don't hear about it until the end of 2024. Justin Bieber will be performing at the halftime show. Mr. Beast quits YouTube. One Direction gets back together for an Eras tour and it's going to be insane. Dumois gets shut down. It may be the most crazy. Road X Rare Beauty Lip Peptide collab. Last year, my 2023 predictions went viral. So here we go, 2024. Travis Kelsey will propose to Taylor Swift at the Super Bowl in February. Ariana Grande and SpongeBob announce a pregnancy. The BFF's podcast is going to end and it's caused by someone getting in a scandal. Alex Earl, Jake Shane, and Chris Olsen will be the only TikTokers at the Met Gala this year. There will be a scandal involving Jacob Lordy and it will end him and Olivia Jade's relationship. Gypsy Rose will get the 22 hat at the second leg of the US Eras tour. Northwest will release an album. Selena Gomez, 
Lopez and Benny Blanco get eloped and we don't hear about it until the end of 2024. Justin Bieber will be performing at the halftime show. Mr. Beast quits YouTube. One Direction gets back together for an Eras tour and it's going to be insane. Dumois gets shut down. It may be the most crazy. Road X Rare Beauty Lip Peptide collab. Again, my bad. I have no fucking idea what she's talking about. I know who Northwest is, uh, I don't know who majority of the things she just said. I just saw a lot of people and her stuff went viral, so I thought it might be interesting. Maybe it's interesting to you, it, it's not interesting to me because I don't know who these people are and do I care and I don't keep up with it. So liked it good on you if you didn't i truly apologize and we'll be better next time but we'll we'll see who likes it who doesn't you know if you don't like it let me know in the comments if you do like it don't let me know because the ones that do like it are not of the type of mind that my audience is you know or the community that we're trying to grow together this community isn't like that so if you did like it great but you don't have to say anything don't comment at all if you think my predictions are dark wait till you see what ai has predicted for 2024 i made a new series i'm going to share the first episode with you right now because i don't want to gatekeep all this you need to know what AI is predicting for 2024. Remember, these are just predictions, okay? They could be wrong. They could also be right. Welcome to our video on 10 scary predictions that have a good chance of happening in 2024. Get ready to be shocked and amazed as we explore the potential future scenarios that could send chills down your spine. Scene 1, Rise of Artificial Intelligence. Witness the rapid advancements in AI technology as robots and machines become smarter and more capable than ever before. Scene 2. Climate Catastrophe Experience the devastating effects of climate change as extreme weather events become more frequent and destructive. Scene 3. Cybersecurity Nightmare Enter the dark world of cybercrime as hackers exploit vulnerabilities in our interconnected systems, leading to widespread chaos and disruption. Scene 4, Pandemic Outbreak. Brace yourself for another global health crisis as a new and deadly virus spreads rapidly, overwhelming healthcare systems worldwide. Scene 5, Economic Collapse. Witness the collapse of financial markets and the global economy, leading to widespread unemployment and social unrest. Scene 6, Technological Surveillance. Explore the dark side of... So the reason that I don't think this kind of stuff is funny or to be toyed with, if you notice I'm not laughing, is because I was behind the Iron Curtain in 1988 to 1989, about seven months, meaning I was in the Soviet Union. I was a German child that was behind behind the Iron Curtain, Soviet Union, for about seven months in the middle of communism. And so uh, I lived with a um, quote-unquote wealthy family but in uh, one of their uh, high-rise, one of the few high-rise buildings. And every morning at, it's like four o'clock uh, in the morning, could see the lines would start because they were getting their food rations for the day. So these long lines, you know, you couldn't see the end of the line. Well, I couldn't from where I was. But what you would also see were what is now known as Pratva, which means the uh, Russian Brotherhood, or the Russian Mafia, usually Russian Brotherhood. At that time, uh, Pratva was a lot smaller, and so they had what's called wolves. And so you're in line with your family, you're getting your goulash, your daily rations of food, and you had wolves because in communism they outlaw everything. 
if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, I believe men could only have four different hairstyles. Women could only have, I think, six hairstyles. And then women could wear, I think, three or four different outfits and men could wear like two or three and so women would have uh you know womanly issues so what you would see are these men that were called wolves and the wolves would have these products illegally you know, because when you make everything illegal then everything becomes black market and people need certain things especially women so you would see these wolves and they would be going up and down these lines and they would say hey you know uh if this is your time then you know the month then you can trade me one week of your food rations for one week of you know these things for your woman time and that that happened a lot as a child i didn't truly understand it and i i just wanted to i used to ask the people that i stayed with i was like well why can't we just feed them we have plenty of food and you know they they said well you know if they knew who we were or what we had you know they would harm us to take from us and I still didn't understand it. I was like, but why? We're helping them. And she says, they don't care about help. They're just trying to survive. And I said, yeah, we're helping them survive. So why can't we just be together and help each other? And that was the mindset that I was at. And it's still kind of the mindset that I'm at now. But now, you know, I'm not as naive. I was, you know, seven, I think. Yeah, seven. So. I don't find that kind of thing funny. I've lived it. I've been in socialist countries where socialism seemed to work pretty well. Communism, if you read it uh, at its core, was created to be a good thing. But the problem with all of these things is the human element. So there's always going to be a humanistic element to all of these things, and there's going to be greed. So just like now, same as then, you're going to have a few people that want to be above the rest. And so they will put these policies upon a population while they live these rich, lavish lives. You know, look at China. Look at North Korea. You know, whoa. Oh. Look at North Korea. You know, the Uns are worshipped basically as gods. You know, they don't even think he poops. I watched a bunch of, uh, it was a documentary where a bunch of uh, ophthalmologists went over there. Ophthalmologist is an eye doctor, you know. And uh, they went over there. They cured blindness. I think, uh, I can't remember if it was five days or seven days, but whatever the time frame, they cured, like, the blindness and the uh, partial blindness in, like, 300 people. And when they were able to see, they didn't thank the doctors that did it. They thanked, uh, I believe it was uh, Kim Jong-il at the time, if I'm not mistaken. Could have, I don't think it was Kim Il Sung. Yeah, I think it was Kim Jong Il. But either way, they thanked their dictator at the time. And when you go into any of their houses, you know, the wounds or the photos on the wall. You know, concentration camps, you know, the. It's just bad. I, I don't like talking stuff. People should know, like, it's, it's nothing to joke about. Like, these people joke about it because they've never lived it, they've never seen it, they've never had to deal with it. And it aggravates me that people... You're talking about, you know, nations of people. 
had to suffer. It's not a joking matter, but people like to joke about, oh, China will do this, Russia will do this, the U.S. will blah. You can say those words, but you're talking about people, families, children, love. You know? You're talking about people. I don't, I don't like it. That one seemed pretty normal. That seemed, excuse me, more like statistics rather than predictions, but you know, a lot of predictions are based off of statistics. I could see a lot of those things happening. Uh, I could see them not happening. Who knows, we'll just have to see. But I'm getting really annoyed at, you know, seeing 341.2 thousand people watching one of these idiots making predictions it's just it's just telling me the uh it's like the iq just null and void these days of certain generations or cer certain people the english psychic the english psychic who is on set to give us a reading right now I would like, Paula, for you to give me a reading hmm. on President Trump. Just the one card. One card. One card. Let's do just one card. We like that one. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what is that? I, I mean, I, I, I do recognize that I'm at, I'm at Fox TV. I have <laughs> a sense of loss. A sense of loss. But it, it's very <sighs> specific. No, 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 no let, let, let me move on. <laughs> it's a sense of loss. It's as if um, he may be thinking more about what he's lost and not still taking full advantage of what he still has. That's a great interpretation, it's Paula. True. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, I... Uh, 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 uh. You just hear these people just mocking. You know, uh, and those, those were tarot cards. So you should be able to flip them multiple times and every time you get the same answer. That's how tarot works. But, you know, of course, they're not going to do it the right way because it's box. This is how a hacker can get into your house and leave no trace and disable all security systems in the process. Check this out. With the flipper, I capture his garage door as he's leaving his driveway. See? Okay, so now that we have the garage door code captured and we're uh, disabling the cameras with another flipper. I'm not going to teach you guys how to do that. Uh, now we're going to go and open the garage. And this is a rolling code, by the way, which means, you know, it'll work on modern garage doors. And um, the cameras, you know, not detecting that I'm here, no notification will show up on this phone. Open the door. And now that the door is open, I can get in here. Still, like I said, no notification. And I'll close it. And so the cameras are completely disabled right now. It's just loading endlessly, and there'll be no history that I ever was here. To resolve this issue, make sure you're aware of your surroundings. And as for the cameras being disabled, um, I don't have a great answer for you other than cameras with local storage or going old school and using wired cameras, because in this case, they depend solely on Wi-Fi. Finally, something I can talk to. Yeah, I've got a flipper. Flippers are awesome. Flippers are amazing devices. They make things too easy. But the fact that this is out there should let you know that uh, don't depend on everyone else for your security. You know, I have cameras all over my property. Uh, all of them are solar powered. All of them are locally stored. And I don't use my garage door open ever. I manually lift, close it, because I know what could happen. But I live in a nice neighborhood. I'm not worried about anything that could happen. But you just never know. You know you're talking, what, like 12 years ago? We used to go war driving when wireless was first out. Like, PetSmart, PetSmart had, like, the, the most horrible security for the wireless. So you can go to one of these 
outdoor mall, malls where there was like Target, that Smart, uh, Ross, and all these Bed Bath and Beyond. And you could just sit there in your car and just war drive. I used to do that a lot. You know, just having fun, seeing what I can get into, seeing what I can do. And, and all those places connect to a central server, usually at corporate headquarters. They have these connections. So once you're wireless, but the flippers more local thing you know you can uh keep it in your pocket he's a his shirt says pen tester so he's a penetration tester it's not a pun he's a, he's a penetration tester and uh i've done pen testing too but the flipper is a great tool i would say that the fact that the flipper exists should tell you what you should do about your security because uh IoT devices are very dumb. Internet of Things, I'm talking like Alexa, usually security cameras, uh, your Echo, uh, all these things, dumb devices, IoT. If you have a refrigerator, if you're dumb enough to have a refrigerator that's on your Wi Fi that has access to your bank account to order you food, like one of those LG fridges, I've got a great fridge that has Wi Fi, but it's not enabled at all. And it doesn't have a window because it's just stupid. I don't need that. But, yeah, if, if you're dumb enough to have that, at least secure it. Because you can, you can go to YouTube and you can, watch, uh, you can watch so many videos on people breaking into people's camera systems in their homes. And people are dumb enough to have cameras all throughout their house. In one video, you see a guy... Uh, you can tell it's uh, a bedroom of a few children. Excuse me. And so one of the children comes in, looks like a five, six-year-old girl, and he starts talking to her on the intercom, saying he's Santa Claus. Obviously, she's freaked out, so she goes and gets Dad. Dad comes in, and then he changes his voice to something else because he's using a voice modulator. And then he's running through the house, and then he goes to the kitchen to try to shut it off, and he's got a, a big-ass uh, Echo Show right there. So he's looking at him, but he can't see who's doing He's like, who are you? Who are you? I'm calling the police. Call the police. What are they going to do? So he calls the police. The police pull up, and in his driveway, he has another damn uh dual spotlight camera device right there so he's just talking shit to the police and the guy's like you know you need to get him blah 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 and they're like well, what do you want us to do yeah because you didn't secure your shit you let your isp come in there and just set it up like an idiot and you didn't ask about security you didn't have multi-factor authentication you didn't use an authenticator you didn't have any kind of uh crypto going like you just you deserved it if that's what you did if you were that naive to allow that kind of thing like i have those things but i also have a fortress and i allow a lot of my friends i say hey you know what just got a new palo alto uh medium business model open season here's my ip tell me what you can do and i'll even help them i'll go to my friend's house and try to break into my own stuff if we can't do it or if it's difficult for us then we know i've done a good job you know not always done a good job but that was like a long time ago but lately I've been great at it so yeah <laughs> Be careful of what you do. So that's a high voltage generator with copper wires and it's ionizing the air. That's why you're seeing that it's in such a small field and then all that copper is ionizing the air with the uh, through it. Oh, we know. Oh, yeah.
That is not how you deal with sciatica. <laughs> Did you, do you see where the... I don't know what that is. Do you see where he's hammering right there at the top of his tailbone? And then he goes about two inches up and just hitting it harder? That's sciatica. That's your sciatic nerve being pinched. And yeah, I've had that before. And I've wanted someone to punch me in my back. But I didn't actually tell him to do it. They're just hammering at these people. What? And this looks like some Russian shit. Rus Russians or Eastern Europeans, they do some crazy stuff because they don't have the resources to know any better. So, oh my god. They, these, this looks like how you would kill somebody or at least... Uh, disable them. This looks like how you would actually like turn somebody into a paraplegic or paralyze them by hitting these specific points. And it, yeah, trust me, I, I've had sciatic problems before from fighting, and you know, uh, I've gone to a chiropractor, but it wasn't anything like this. There, it looks like a hammer and chisel, and then they're just digging in. And I know that pain can be so bad to where you just want someone to just get in there and do that but when they get in there and do that you know they're they're damaging your body oh. <laughs> man he's fucking people. this has been a weird video i've, I've got to say that it's been a very strange video hope you guys enjoyed it uh i've still got to edit uh and I'm sorry if some of you are more in tune with what's going on in, like, pop culture. I just don't keep up with it. I don't care. I, just, I don't. Like, there's, there's no part of me that cares about any of that. I love music. You know, I've been a musician most of my life. I don't care about, like, the whole people in Hollywood all that and what they're doing i just don't care unless they're like going out of their way to be different like you know like cat williams and you know some of these people that are exposing secrets i do care about that and it's interesting sorry i i couldn't tell you uh most of these people's names so that's it gonna end it on this note i'm gonna edit and then go to bed hope you guys enjoyed give me a like and comment please hit that subscribe hit this uh well this isn't awareness that should be out there but it's kind of funny so if you want it to be out there it's all up to you guys not up to me so you let me know but we're gonna have some better stuff more than likely tomorrow i just thought this would be fun to try and uh predictions for since 2024 has already been kind of strange i wanted to see what people were saying and the things that were going viral i didn't pre-watch them we watched them together and i i didn't like what i was seeing so you might not have liked what you were seeing so if you didn't like what i showed you i humbly apologize because i didn't know what it was either but I've got to edit and i've got to get it up and do better next time. <laughs>
<laughs> but this was great. This right here. Let me switch. This. This. All of this right here. Fucking fantastic. I've, I've loved every bit of that. So, see you guys on the next one.